introducing the Bite Me Cannabis Club. The Bite Me Cannabis Club aims to be an inclusive online space for cannabis lovers. Whether you're simply curious about how cannabis can improve your life or you're fully seasoned, there's always more to learn. When you join the Bite Me Cannabis Club, you'll have access to like-minded people interested in cannabis, monthly workshops, live Q&As, recipes and recipe swaps, digital cookbooks, a fully functional chat feature, and a whole lot more. For a limited time, it's only $5 a month with a 30-day free trial so you can try it out and see if it's right for you. This isn't just another Facebook group or confusing Discord channel. I carefully chose a platform that offers a clear, uncluttered, and seamless community experience. See for yourself. Join today. Say hello. I can't wait to connect with you there. Join the Bite Me Cannabis Club today. Link in your podcast app. In this episode, we're doing the ultimate fitness smoothie. Welcome to Bite Me, the show about edibles where I help you take control of your high life. I am your host, Marge, and I'm super glad that you're here listening along. Thank you for joining me. For many people out there, January represents that time when we try and tighten up our diets, improve things, make resolutions. And I realize by the time this comes out, it's going to be more than midway through the month. But that doesn't mean you can't make positive changes at any point. I actually stopped making New Year's resolutions a few years ago because I found that it's pretty discouraging when you have the best of intentions at the beginning of the month and by the end of the month, you're like, ah, fuck it. And you're not interested anymore. And then you're like, why can't I follow through on anything? And you know how that uh, mental loop goes, or maybe you don't. But I kind of gave up on them. And I have found actually that served me quite well because I just to try and have positive goals and outcomes regardless of the time of year. And I don't necessarily feel like I need to wait any longer until that magical date on the calendar of January 1st. So it can really help you get on board with that. If you're looking for positive habit change, I will recommend a book. It has nothing to do with edibles, but if you're looking to make any positive changes at any point during the year, Atomic Habits, I believe it's called by James Clear, highly recommended because he gets on or he talks about how small incremental changes can lead to the big change that you're looking for. And a lot of the times creating new habits isn't about doing a wholesale, throwing everything out of your fridge and starting all over again and making all these big, massive changes all at once and then getting discouraged when you don't follow through because it was too much change at one point. He talks about breaking it down into much smaller increments and some of the psychology that goes behind that. Excellent book. I still reference it even though I read it a couple of years ago, at least. And I use a lot of the strategies from that book. So if you're looking for something, you're finding it hard to fall through on some of the the changes that you want to make in life, I would highly recommend that one. I'll link to it in the show notes. Now, me, the show, but edibles has made the good pods top charts. Yes. Yes, friends. I am number 11, the top 100 indie how-to charts. So number 11 out of the top 100 indie how-to charts. Uh, Number 17 in the how-to chart and number 54 in the top 100 in the education uh, charts. So I was pretty happy to get that email. And a lot of that's because you people are out there uh, listening to the episodes, enjoying them, hopefully sharing them, rating them, reviewing them, all the rest of that stuff. It all helps spread the word because in podcasting, spreading the word is the most important thing you can do to support a podcast because that's how people discover it. And discoverability is always a thing when it comes to podcasts, just because search engines and everything, while they're improving are not nearly as robust as they are in other sorts of media out there. So everything you're doing to support my show really helps and I appreciate it. Now to today's recipe, the ultimate fitness smoothie. Now I know a lot of you might be trying to eat healthier this year and maybe some of you are just like, you know what? I already eat pretty healthy. I'm satisfied the way with the way things are going. And that's fine. This isn't really about a New Year's resolution. This is more about sharing sort of how I start my mornings because I've gone through different iterations over the years of what I like to do to start the morning. I went through a whole bulletproof coffee phase for a long time. Uh, I used to do oatmeal for a lot of years in the morning with steel cut oats specifically with uh, cut up apples and different things like that. Like I've over the years, I've just done a lot of different things. But right now I have been on a smoothie kick for the last little while. And that's been serving me well lately because I do understand that, of course, your needs, 
and everything else change as time goes on. And you have to have that willingness to just go with the flow. So for me, the smoothie works because it's pretty quick to put together. And I, if I'm running a little late in the morning, it's, or I have to go do something, it's something you can easily bring with you as well. And you don't feel like you have to skip that breakfast because they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I think the science on that is changing a little bit, but I do like to start after I've had some coffee, of course. I always start my morning with coffee, but I really do like to enjoy these smoothies. And I feel like I'm just packing a whole ton of nutrients into one thick cup of deliciousness. And that's how I like to start my day. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. It really has nothing to do with New Year's resolutions. But if you want to use it as a catalyst for taking on some healthier habits, then wonderful. That's wonderful as well. So I do like to start my morning and this one is pretty well based on a fellow um, podcaster, although this podcaster has been doing it for a lot longer than I have, but Ben Greenfield. And he has a podcast called Ben Greenfield Fitness. It's one that I listen to on a regular basis and he has a lot of interesting guests and insight into health and fitness. He's quite brilliant in that area. And he had posted a while ago about superfood smoothies in the morning and I will share his original post about that because he puts in his recipes that he's doing for that for his fit, uh, ultimate fitness smoothie. And I have to admit, I've tweaked mine significantly as I encourage you to do as well. Why do you ask? Well, because he puts so much stuff into his smoothies and I can't help but think that sometimes that's really got to taste like shit, but mine tastes pretty good. And I think the secret is banana, but I'll get to that in a minute. So he has this list of of ingredients he likes to put in his smoothies in the morning. And it's pretty significant. Um, but he does start out with some basics, some of which I do and some of which I don't. But as far as infusing this, the wonderful thing about it is he's using some MCT oil, which you can infuse. And I do do this from time to time. I don't necessarily do it every day, although I have been wanting to infuse some MCT oil with CBD because I feel like that would be a wonderful way to make this. I am taking CBD a lot of mornings anyway, so why not just put it right into my smoothie and do it that way? And of course, on the weekends or whenever it serves you, everyone does their own thing. You could always swap out that MCT oil for something like a THC oil instead. And of course, you're not putting in a whole ton. So if you have coconut, an infused coconut oil, MCT oil, of course, works great. Um, MCT oil works probably better just because the coconut oil, depending, can obviously harden and it doesn't do well in cold in a smoothie. So the MCT oil is going to mix a lot better, but you can always throw in a little olive oil. I mean, you're probably not really going to taste much if you're adding in, say, a teaspoon to a tablespoon and you are wanting something with a little bit of extra a little bit of extra fat to keep you satiated during your morning until lunchtime or whenever you decide to eat next. And you could do an avocado oil as well, because I always put a frozen avocado in my smoothie too. So that would be a nice addition. So whatever way you do it, adding either CBD or THC to your preferred ratio. And of course, you can easily adjust this. This is what's so great about it. You want to put in some CBD, fantastic. You want to microdose with some THC, wonderful. You can do that very easily. It's a, a day where you have some time off and you want to really give yourself a nice little wake and bake or whatever the case might be, then increase the dose to however you like it. That is why I love these types of recipes because they are so perfectly adjustable to your needs. Take control of your high life. Am I right? So the basics he starts out with, and I have to admit, I don't do the coconut milk, but he adds three to six ounces of full fat coconut milk, uh, MCT oil, frozen or chopped avocado. I personally always use frozen because have you ever been to the, well, I'm sure if you've ever bought an avocado, you go to the store, you buy the bag of avocados, they're hard as rocks. And then two days later, they're all overripe. And then I don't have any avocado to put in my smoothie because I open them up and they all look brown and gross and I don't want to use them. So I use frozen avocado instead. And I find that works fantastic because I can just leave it in my freezer and pull out a few pieces as I need them. So that's what I would recommend for that particular instance. And that's one way I've modified this recipe to suit myself better. He also adds um, vegan or whey protein powder. I always add that as well. That's sort of the one basis for this particular recipe because I want to make sure that I'm getting enough protein to start my day as well. He adds organic Ceylon cinnamon. And even though I have to buy some because I've run out, I always 
when I have it in stock, I always add Ceylon cinnamon because this can help lower the blood sugar response to a meal, probably including this smoothie as well, because if you're adding fruit, there's going to be a blood sugar response. Actually, a lot of things can add. A lot of things can um, incite a blood sugar response and it has to be Ceylon cinnamon. A lot of the regular cheap cinnamon, I shouldn't say cheap, but if it doesn't say Ceylon cinnamon on the container or the package is probably not Ceylon cinnamon. And the studies have been associated specifically with Ceylon as far as uh, the blood sugar response. So I do like to add it. That's one thing I do add all the time. He also adds two teaspoons of organic cacao powder. Um, if you like chocolatey goodness and that's not something I've ever added, but it sounds kind of interesting. I personally like to do like a vanilla protein powder when I add mine, just because I like that vanilla taste. But if you're really into chocolate, that could be a nice way to add even more chocolatey goodness to maybe a chocolate flavored protein powder. Um, he also adds a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is where some of the things start to get, I've actually not looked at this thing in a while, this article, because a while ago when I was first looking at these smoothies, this is, this was sort of formed the basis of what I was, I was creating for myself in the mornings, unsweetened coconut flakes, organic cacao nibs, raw almonds, Brazil nuts, and a pinch of high quality salt. Now, I don't add any of that stuff. And now that I'm rereading this thing, I was like, maybe I should incorporate some of these things into it. But sometimes I wonder, maybe I don't need to. I don't, I don't know. It, it can be nice. Uh, he has a pretty big list of items that he adds in. A lot of it's powders and extracts and all the rest of it. And some of them I've added and some of them I've taken away. I do always add things like curcumin. I add maca root powder moringa powder, spirulina tablets that I throw in. I like the tablets as opposed to the powder because sometimes I'll throw them into a trail mix as well because those spirulina chlorella tablets are so good for you. And that's sort of one way to get your greens as well. I'm getting the the chlorella spirulina tablets and the moringa powder is uh, considered a, a leafy green as well. I'm adding hemp hearts typically because they offer an excellent source of a perfectly balanced omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid. In fact, one of the only things I believe on the planet that is perfectly balanced between the two fatty acids. And interestingly enough, that comes from our beloved cannabis plant. So how wonderful is that? And what else do I add? I have added ashwagandha in the past. I don't have any of that right now trying to think. Oh, I always add collagen powder because that's supposed to be good for hair, skin, teeth, joints, all that kind of thing. I add creatine every day. There is a ton of research on the benefits of creatine. No loading phase required. I add glutamine. And perhaps I should have written these things down before I started this podcast, but I take these things into my cupboard every single day. I have gone and done other things as well, but right now that's kind of what I'm doing. I'll link to his, his, um, article as well. So you can have a look at that and see what other things he's adding. I mean, he says he adds like a vitamin D. I actually take a vitamin D, uh, tablet or well, depending on what happens to be, uh, at the store at the time, I take vitamin D separately in the morning anyway, it's supposed to be excellent for you, um, for a lot of different reasons. And I live in a country where, I mean, it's been getting a little better. We're past the winter solstice. So the days are starting to get a little bit longer. I have noticed, but it's still dark at, you know, five, five, probably five thirty. So we're not getting enough sun. And they also say that COVID or sorry, uh, vitamin D is great as an immunity as for boosting immunity against COVID and helping to, your body deal with it if you do happen to get it. So vitamin D is a good thing to add. So if you have like a liquid vitamin D, you could throw that in there too. He's adding uh, chia seeds. Actually, I add flax as opposed to chia because I have that in the cupboard and I like it. Um, Vitamin C. I have added vitamin C powder in the past. I'm just taking a vitamin C tablet right now during the winter because of the, all the sickness going around, whether it's COVID or otherwise, there seems to be a lot going around right now. He's adding schisandra, astragalus, chlorella, spirulina, goji berries. I'm not adding, well, I'm adding the the chlorella tablets, but he's also adding seaweed. Oh, I forgot about that one too. Uh, I'm not adding goji berries. Maybe I should add that. I actually just saw uh, somebody post today about 
how goji berries, 28 grams a day of goji berries can improve the biomarkers in people who are genetically predisposed to macular degeneration, which is where you slowly lose your eyesight, the bio, and then like your main eyesight, and you retain your peripheral vision until such time as it does all go away. And it just so happens that I have a family history of that, and I do carry the gene, which is means... I may one day go blind. Now, of course, this is age-related, so it doesn't typically happen to people. My father's actually suffering from macular degeneration right now. He's 90. He was diagnosed with it a couple of years ago, so it is definitely something that affects you in your old age. But hey, if I can eat some goji berries and, and improve my odds of not getting it, then why wouldn't I? It seems like a small price to pay. So he also adds things like aloe vera juice, which I used to do as well, but then I kind of ran out and was just like, ah. And he lists a few other things, but I mean, I could go on and on and then you could realize how expensive some of these things can get. And that seems unproductive, I suppose, or it can get discouraging when you think about that. So basically I'll link to what I put in my smoothie and then I'll, I'll put that in the show notes and then I'll link to his article about this, um, ultimate fitness smoothie. And then what you're going to do is if you're interested in making something like this, you're going to decide how you want to infuse it, CBD, THC, what type of, uh, oil or fat that you're going to put in it. And then you're going to pick and choose from the list of things and, and decide what you want to put in your own smoothie so you can make it your own ultimate fitness smoothie. Because obviously, if you don't have a family history of goji berries, maybe that's not something you really need to worry about. You know, as an example. Now, I also do happen to add, aside from the frozen avocado, I add banana whenever I have it. And I'm out of bananas today, so I wasn't able to add it. But I do find that the banana will help overpower the taste of anything that's kind of yucky. So that's one pro tip right there. And then I usually like to add a little bit of frozen fruit as well. And I tend to add things like the superfood berries, if you will, um, the mixed bag of like blackberry and raspberry and, and cherries and stuff like that. Um, sometimes I switch it up depending, but that is what I like to do. And then I, and that's about it, really. It's the banana and the berries that I like. And of course, I always use the fresh bananas because I happen to have them. I suppose I could buy frozen as well, but I just don't tend to. And then I do the frozen fruit because again, they're easy to have in the freezer and keep on hand and it makes it taste good. And then I'm, I was adding things at one point like blueberry powder, but that kind of stuff does tend to get pretty pricey. I'm not going to lie. And So when I ran out of that first bag, I kind of left it out and just went with the frozen, the frozen berries as an alternative because it was just getting pretty expensive, some of these ingredients. So there you have it. That is my ultimate fitness smoothie that I start out with almost seven days a week. Although I do periodically on the weekends when I have more time, say a couple times a month, I really love to enjoy something a little more indulgent like pancakes particularly pancakes or French toast. So I do switch it up because, you know, sometimes you got to have, you got to indulge a little bit. And I did do an episode on infused pancakes not that long ago because having a nice little infused syrup on top of your pancakes is a really nice way to start your weekend in a relaxed frame of mind. So keep that in mind as well. So I hope you found this useful. If you try it out and you tweak it to make it your own, or if you have your own soup, your own Uh, smoothie recipe that you'd love to share please reach out to me I'd love to hear it all and I hope you're staying warm wherever you are where I am it has been pretty cold lately and at the time of this recording at the time of this recording it's been very cold here so wherever you are I hope you're keeping warm you're staying healthy and you're enjoying lots of great edibles and until next week my friends stay high are you tired of trying edibles that are inconsistent in strength and flavor Attempting to figure out your tolerance? Do you want to take control of your edibles experience and find the optimum combination of factors that results in the best outcome? If so, this edibles journal is perfect for you. The Bite Me Edibles Journal provides a convenient and organized way for you to track and record your edibles experience, whether it's homemade edibles or store-bought. It includes 48 fillable pages. It's sized 8.5 by 11 for plenty of writing space includes information on calculating the potency of homemade edibles, and it was created by an edibles expert. Whether you're a seasoned edibles enthusiast or just starting out on your cannabis journey, the Bite Me Edibles Journal is an essential tool for anyone interested in enjoying their edibles to the fullest. 
Take control of your high life with this convenient and helpful resource. Add it to your Amazon cart today. Tap the link in the show notes.